So uh, I put a funny theme on Facebook. Didn't mean to do that, so I had to get that together. Anyway, glad to see you back here again. Uh, Prophet David Taylor here. Uh, glad to be back with you on my regular uh, Sunday afternoon time. Uh, I wasn't on last weekend, wasn't feeling too well, but feeling a lot better today. Went to church, had a great time in church today. Great, uh, great time of worship, great time of prophetic utterances, great time of... Um, just listening to my pastor uh, take charge about some things and uh, call for boldness among the saints about the things that we're dealing with. So really great, really great time. So as always, you know, I come out and I pray and I ask the Holy Spirit, what does he want me to give to the body of Christ? And you know, I've got a new saying, I've got a new phrase, and so I want to be sure to give that new phrase to you. And here's my new phrase. My new phrase is, God would have told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say it like, God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to his prophets. Okay? But that's why you need the prophetic word. That's one of the advantages of being a Christian, is that we can hear from the Lord, and we can understand uh, some things. And so, again, so you're going to hear me say that quite a bit, that God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. All right? So, again, welcome to all my audiences, uh, Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, SoundCloud. You know, we're, we're going a whole bunch of different places now. Uh, so I want you to do three things. I want you to please like this video and share it. With your friends, I want you to sign up for my email list, and you can find that link on uh, on my Facebook page. Sign up for my email list. You can also find it on the website prophetdavidtaylor.org, so you'll know when new stuff drops. So, number one, I want you to like and share. Those two things kind of go together, so that counts as one. Number two, I want you to sign up for my email list, so you can know when new information drops. And number three, I want you to donate to help support my ministry, because the more I have the more I can do. Uh, I've told you before about my project where I want to set some things up to minister to the homeless. So uh, you can uh, support me on paypal.me, prophetdavidtaylor.paypal.me. I put that link in uh, all of my uh, places where this posts. And you can also uh, support me on Amazon Smile. Amazon has a program where when you make some purchases on Amazon, they put a portion of their part into your not-for-profit of choice. So you can choose a, a PDT NFP and then uh, you can support me that way as well. Okay? So again, three things. Please like and share. Please subscribe to my email list so you can know when new, new stuff drops. There's no spam on my email list because I don't like spam, so I don't spam people. And uh, please support my ministry by donating through paypal.me or Amazon Smile. And all those links are every place where this broadcast or podcast or whatever it is. Okay? All right, so let's get into our word for today. And our word for today is, <clears throat> I, at first I thought it was take up your bed and walk, but actually what the Spirit of God told me to say was that it's miracle. And he started showing me why. So our scripture reference is going to be John chapter 5. John chapter 5 is a very familiar passage of scripture, but we're going to look at it in the light of a few things concerning the, the prophetic word of miracle. All right? Uh, also, really quickly, let me explain. Sometimes you get a prophetic word, sometimes you can do a prophetic utterance from that word, and sometimes you can do a prophetic teaching from that word. I tend to do all three in my broadcast. I ask the Spirit of God, what is the word, the word, or, you know, sometimes you can get a, a picture or a phrase, and then you can do teaching off that. Periscope is frozen. Oh, I'm so sorry. Then you can do a teaching off of that, and then sometimes you can do prophetic utterance. I'm so sorry. Periscope is frozen. Okay, wait. I think my, uh, I think my, uh, my internet should be working fine. Uh, hello, Anna. Thank you for coming back. I uh, hope Periscope's still not freezing up. Um, so, ooh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I can do about that. 
uh, internet, internet should be working fine here. So, uh, so the word is miracle. Scripture references in John chapter 5, very, very familiar. So we're going to start at chapter 1. Uh, and then we're going to go verses 1 through 9, and then we're going to skip down to verse 14. So after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, it, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an agent went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. We're going to skip down to verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. Mm. Those verses are action-packed. Let's start from the top. First of all, I want you to notice there was a great multitude of people at Bethesda, okay, at the five-porch place of Bethesda, and they had all different kinds of problems, okay? And it looks like there was a miracle dropping among them because it looked like the angel of God would go down at a certain season and trouble the water. By trouble, that means stir it up. And whoever got in the water first after it got stirred up was going to receive like a miracle healing. So there were miracles dropping, okay? But you had to be first to get in the pool to get the miracle. So now, if there's a great multitude of impotent, blind, halt, withered people waiting for the movement of the water, that means that some way or another, once the angel stirred the water up, and put the miracle healing touch in the water, you had to hurry yourself up and get to that pool. And if you didn't get to the pool first, too bad, say, hey, prophet, it's shame of God, bet you're too bad, so sad for you, you didn't get your healing. Now, I know that might seem rough, but what does that translate to in real life? In real life, sometimes there are opportunities that are dropping, but you have to be first to them. Did you know that? Did you know that some opportunities, some blessings in life, See, you have to get, see, that's why you need to listen to my No More Genies teaching. Because you've got to get rid of your notion of fair. Fair is a human idea. There is no such thing as fair. Fair does not exist. Okay? There's no such situation where in all times, all cases, all places, all dimensions, all human beings have the same circumstances, gifts, talents, opportunities, whatever. It does not exist as something we made up. There's no such thing as fair. So it doesn't really matter what you think about certain opportunities. That's what this verse is teaching us. Certain opportunities are going to drop, and you're going to have an opportunity to get in them, and you've got to be first. <laughs> and if you don't get in it first, then, then you miss that opportunity. Now, the, this lesson teaches us it wasn't the only opportunity, but that's that opportunity. Okay? So... Uh, then it says a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. 38 years. 38 years. 38 years. Okay, that's a chronic illness. 38 years. 38 years. That's almost four decades with the same health problem. Four decades, almost 38 years. Okay? When Jesus saw him there, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, what did the Lord say? The Lord said, I sure do feel sorry for you. That ain't what he said. <laughs> the Lord said, man, you've been there a long time. That ain't what he said. What the Lord said was, will you be made whole? What a thing for Jesus to say. <laughs> Why did the Lord say something like that? <laughs> 
Here's why. Because God doesn't force. God does not force. God offers. That's why he said, will you be made whole? God is going to reach out his hand and offer you his grace, offer you his love, offer you a chance. If you're willing, then you can jump on it. But if not, he's not going to make you. Okay? So he said, will you be made whole? But how did the man respond? The man responded out of his pain. He said, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step is down before me. So what did the man confess? Okay? The man confessed his lack. He confessed that he couldn't get to the pool fast enough. He confessed that he didn't have no help. And he confessed that other people kept beating him to the pool. None of that is what the Lord asked him, but that's what the man said, because that's what was on his mind. And the Lord said, will you be made whole? And the man started listing all the reasons why it hasn't happened for me yet. And the Lord said, rise, take up thy bed and walk. And that's the part the Holy Spirit wanted to key in on for the miracle. What the Lord is saying to many people that are looking at me now, looking at my audience, is that God is saying to you to rise, take up your bed and walk. Okay? All this time you've been talking about your deficits. You've been talking about what you don't have, who's not helping you, how long you've been in that state, how long you've been in a chronic illness, uh, how other people have beat you to the punch. And that's not what the Lord is saying. What the Lord is saying, will you be made whole? If that answer is yes, then his answer is rise, take up your bed, and walk. What a thing for the Lord to say. So that means that if God gives you an opportunity to get up, if you want to get up, then get up. That's the thing to do is get up. Okay? So you can understand if you've had an infirmity for 38 years, why you might, you know, be fixated on all the things that haven't gone right in your life. But what the Spirit of God wants me to convey to the body is that's not what the Lord is saying to you. What the Lord is saying is, will you be made whole? Right. Amen, prophet. It's faith. That's right. Will you be made whole? And if that answer is yes, then the Lord is saying, rise, take up your bed and walk. And you can get a miracle. You can get a miracle. Now, then it says, verse 9, immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now, we're going to drop down to verse 14, and I want to point out a few things to you that you may have never thought of. Verse 14 says, Afterward, Jesus finds him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Wow. Now, not that many people spend that much time on that verse. They spend most of their time on verses 1 through 9, Rise, take up your bed and walk, and immediately the man was made whole. Not that many people talk about, afterwards the Lord found him in the temple, and the Lord said unto him, that's why the Lord said in Matthew 4, 4, you've got to study every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Not just a word, not just a few words, every, every word. It says, Behold, thou art made whole. Then he said, Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. How does that translate up to us? Uh, how does that translate to us today? What's the practical application of that principle? Here it is. It means you can't keep doing the stuff you was doing before. It means that even if you get a miracle, the Lord is saying, don't keep living like you was living. So let's look at that in a practical sense, okay? Let's say you've been wanting to get married for quite some time and you're still not married. Let's say that you haven't been preparing yourself to get married. And maybe God drops a fantastic person, a fantastic opportunity in your life. If you got an opportunity to build a good marriage, that means you can't keep living like you were. You got to learn how to be married now. That's what that means. Let's say you've been praying for a financial miracle. And let's say you've had bad financial habits all up to this point in your life. And let's say God opens his hand and gives you quite a bit of money. Okay? You can't keep living in the financial sins you were living in before, lest the worst financial thing come upon you. So even if God gives you those finances that you're looking for, you can't keep living, right, go and sin no more. You can't keep living in the financial mistakes you were making before. That's what that means. 
What about deliverance? Because the Bible talks about this in detail. What about deliverance? Deliverance means when you get unclean spirits cast out. When you get demons cast out of you, when you get unclean spirits cast out of you, when you get something broke off of you, okay? When you get something broke off of you, something that's been plaguing you your whole life, like maybe you had bad headaches, maybe you had crippling anxiety and you found out there was an attack from the enemy that was an unclean spirit, maybe you had extraordinary fear, crippling fear, all that, those are unclean spirits. When you get that stuff broke off from you, you know what that means? It means you can't keep living the way you was living when them demons was in your life. So whatever you was doing that invited them unclean spirits in or whatever you're participating in that opens the door for that, you can't do that anymore. You've got to sin no more unless the worst thing come upon you. So what the Lord is saying is that even after God offers you a miracle, okay, you got to change your lifestyle. And that amazes me how many times when we talk about miracles and faith, we don't follow up with John chapter 5 verse 14 and tell people, that we got to change our lifestyles, okay? Let's say you are married and somebody's had an affair. And let's say you caught your spouse in an affair. That's devastating, okay? That's absolutely devastating. If you cheated and you got caught, you devastated your spouse. If your spouse cheated on you and you caught them, that devastated them. That's devastating in a marriage. Adultery is devastating to a marriage. But let's say... You get a miracle of forgiveness and reconciliation. Let's say your spouse chooses to forgive you and stay married and say they want to work on the marriage. Do you know what you have to do now? You have to sin no more lest the worst thing come upon you. What that means is that you can't keep having people on the side. You can't keep tipping and dipping on your spouse. You have, if you didn't know faithfulness, and fidelity before, you have to learn faithfulness and fidelity now. That's what that means in a practical sense. Can you see that? Okay, so that's what God wants us to know. So let me do a re quick recap, and then I'll drop a prophetic word, and then we'll be out. Quick recap is, the word for today is miracle. The scripture verse is John 5, verses 1 through uh, 9. And then we also included verse 14, okay? Uh, God is reaching out his hand to those that want a miracle. There are some opportunities in life where you they only come the way they come, and they ha happen when they happen, and you've got to be first. But God is reaching out his hand, saying that if you are willing, you can be made whole. Don't do like this man and start rehearsing all the stuff that's wrong and all what you don't have. Take the Lord at his word, and if the Lord says, rise, take up your bed and walk, then rise, take up your bed and walk, and believe you can get up. But afterward, after you get that miracle and you get up and you take up your bed and walk, then remember verse 14 where the Lord says, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. In other words, change your lifestyle. Change your lifestyle. Don't keep living after you get your miracle the way you did back when you were still infirmed. Your thought pattern, your financial habits, your relationship habits, whatever, okay? Go your way and sin no more, okay? All right, now uh, let me see if there's anything the Holy Ghost wants me to release in terms of a prophetic utterance. For behold, my people, I have sent my word by the mouth of my prophet to tell you that I'm reaching out to you to grant you your miracle, and I am willing to grant you the miracle to allow you to take up your bed and walk. And after you get up, rejoice in the newness of life and embrace a new lifestyle that will continue the healing and continue the health and continue the miracle that I have given you. Do not go back to the old lifestyle. Do not sin anymore lest the worst thing come upon you, but embrace the new life. Embrace the new thought pattern. Embrace the new way of living. Embrace the promised land so you can have joy and fullness of days, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Okay, well, that blessed my heart as usual. The Lord blessed my heart. So, yeah, so praise God for that. Now, I want to let you know that, uh, again, we have all kinds of offerings for my broadcast now. So, uh, going to be a YouTube video, going to be a podcast, going to be on SoundCloud, going to be all that. So uh, I'm going to put links uh, on these different places, and then you can always check out my website, 
prophetdavidtaylor.org because I'm going to put a, uh, a blog post release every time I have a new release. So please get on my email list so you don't miss any of that. I'm live every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's today for the live prophetic word. And then every second Thursday, once a month, I'm on at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, and I'm teaching No More Genies. Okay, No More Genies is when you have a genie concept of God, when you think all you have to do is rub the lamp and you just get stuff out of God. No, that's messed a lot of people up. So I do some extensive teaching on that. Okay? And then real soon here, I'm hoping that, because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start releasing my music on this channel too, because I have a whole prophetic music ministry, so I want you to check some of that out as well. So I've got a bunch of good things that I'm already doing. I've got a bunch of good things coming up. And I really appreciate your support because your support helps me do more. So my links are there for my PayPal.me and my Amazon Smile. So uh, anything you donate, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I want to be able to reach as many people uh, as I can with the prophetic word, with the prophetic music. Blessings, blessings. With the prophetic word, with the prophetic music with the prophetic utter, utterances, with the prophetic teaching. All right? All right, so that's it for today. And uh, so you can always watch the replay, replay if you miss me live. And like I said, many different uh, opportunities to watch it now, many different uh, uh, kinds of content. All right? God bless you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a blessed week. I hope that you have the faith to receive your miracle. I hope that you are made every whit whole. I hope that you're made completely whole, and then I hope you embrace the new life, that we go our way and sin no more, so we can embrace the newness of life that Jesus died to give us, and we don't keep living the way we did back before we got our miracle. All right? God bless you. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ, and I will see you next weekend.